We've been asked to show the difference in technology between our Tsunami regenerative dryer system that uses a molecular sieve desiccant technology compared to typical desiccant technology dryers that's in the marketplace. The most common type dryer you're going to find in the marketplace is a desiccant pot. This desiccant pot right here is full of silica gel. That's the most common type product in there. And there are different grades of silica gel. Some of the old silica gel, um, if you actually had a slug of water hit that, they'll actually start to explode. And uh, they absorb so much water, they actually crystallize and will explode. Uh, some of the newer type silica gel will not do that. Um, you can see that they're a larger type uh, bead compared to what we use in, in our drying technology, we use a molecular sieve. And you can see these beads are very, very small. So there's many, many more of these beads in the same area than these beads. Here's just a, a, a better picture of how, how large a difference in um, diameter are. You can see these, these white clear beads, how large they are compared to those small ones. Um, we learned through our right to know through our OSHA training here at the factory that the little air sacs, the alveoli that's in your lungs, little tiny air sacs. And if you took the air sacs that's in a typical person's lungs and you would just lay them out flat, you'd have the surface area of approximately a full football field. So the smaller the diameter bead, the more surface area to attract moisture to that bead. The silica gel beads, they're like a sponge where they absorb moisture and when they're, when, when they're full, you need to replace them. What generally happens is these type pots, they have windows in there and they start off with a blue window and when they start to change, they start to change about 24% relative humidity. It's when it really starts to change when you can start seeing them change from that blue. If they're white like this, they're probably close to 60 to 80% uh, relative humidity. Uh, the issues that you have with this type of technology with the new paints are the new paints require low relative humidities. Most paint companies will recommend in that 5%, 10% kind of being the high end. So when these start to change to a different color than blue, which you can actually see, you're almost 140% out of spec when they start to change. One of the other things that happens is these beads are loose in here. And as the air flows through there, you get a lot of bouncing around of those pellets. And what you get is you can create downstream dust through there. With our technology here, you can see this is encompassed in here and see this big spring in here. So we pack in the beads, put it around this casing. We actually have a 10 micron bag that surrounds the beads with these large springs. So they're under extreme compression. So there is no movement in this type of a bead. So you don't get that, that dust that's created with that type of a bead. Most people would, would either replace these on a three-month schedule. And again, the technology was back when the only, the only paints that were being sprayed were primarily a uh, solvent-based paint. You could paint with 25% moisture, relative humidity. Uh, nowadays, you can't. So the only true way to really test your air is you need some type of a tester to test your air quality of your air downstream from any dryer to assure you're getting your dry air. The other thing that's important about that is when you're diagnosing a problem, and if you have a blue reading, but you're really maybe 24% relative humidity, you might spend many extra hours working on an issue where you think you have good dry air, but you really don't. So you can waste a lot of time in diagnosing problems with paint by not having the correct information.